Hey, in this one, we're gonna be deploying WordPress to a Kubernetes cluster. Now, of course, this means that we're gonna be using the WordPress container image, and we're gonna deploy it to the Linode Kubernetes engine, the managed Kubernetes by the Akamai Connected Cloud, formerly Linode. Now, the idea here is that we want to get familiar with deploying WordPress because it's a very popular and very valuable tool itself but also we get to learn about stateful sets in Kubernetes because we will actually provision a database for WordPress with this stateful set. Now, I want you to get in the habit of using WordPress for really practical things if you're in the process of learning about it, if you're trying to get better at it. Using WordPress is one of those things that's really practical because there's a really good chance that WordPress, the application itself, is going to work. The other question is, is it gonna work on your cluster? And of course, that's what I wanna show you. I wanna show you how to do this specifically and step-by-step. Step. Now, my name is Justin Mitchell. I've partnered up with Akamai on this series to make sure that you can understand and learn these skills. But that being said, I wanna make sure that you have some familiarity with Kubernetes, and maybe you have the Kubernetes command line tool or kubectl installed on your local machine so you can actually work with a lot of the commands we're gonna be end up using here. Now, of course, if you don't have any intention to ever deploy WordPress, this will give you a lot of foundational knowledge in stateful sets and using databases with a real production application. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo as to what we're gonna end up building. First and foremost, all of the code is on the WordPress on k repository within the Coding for Entrepreneurs profile or account on GitHub. Next up, I already have a Kubernetes cluster running, which is what we'll provision next. But the idea here is I also grabbed that cube config file and I added it into this cube.cube folder. Next up, of course, I open up the code workspace itself to get the environment variable that references that same cube config file. So I can do kubectl get nodes, something like that. First up, we're gonna go ahead and grab the config map. We're gonna go ahead and do kubectl apply dash F of that config map. Next up, we'll go ahead and get our database going. So kubectl apply dash F. That's gonna be our database right there, our MySQL database, which will also provision a volume for us. So it'll automatically go into that volume. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and provision the service for it. So kubectl apply dash F for that service. So we do kubectl get pods to see that yes, the actual database itself is still being provisioned. And then the service, if I take a look at it again, it will probably take just a few moments for that to get up and going. If I look at the service with k kubectl get svc, I can see that I have a cluster IP or an internal service for Kubernetes going. So the pods, now that that database is running, I can actually do my WordPress deployment. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with kubectl apply dash F, the WordPress deployment. And then we can also at the same time deploy the WordPress service. This is the load balancer service. This will give us an IP address, a public IP address, right inside of the Linode console. And Linode actually manages all this as I discuss. But there's our IP address, our public IP address. So if I do kubectl get K, uh, SVC again, I will see that same IP address for the load balancer for WordPress so that our WordPress instance is working correctly. And what I can do is go to that IP address and actually look at the WordPress installation. Now this might take a moment or so for WordPress to be fully ready, but in only a few minutes, we've seen how far we've already come. I have a database already running and I have a, a static public IP address that I can assign a domain name to. So let's give it a moment for WordPress to come up. And after a few moments, we are able to have WordPress in here and we can go through the installation process and all of that. We're gonna start by provisioning a Kubernetes cluster, a managed Kubernetes cluster on Akamai Connected Cloud, formerly Linode. Now, of course, this is what the console looks like. If you don't have an account already, hey, why not give me some credit by going to linode.com and you can get a hundred dollar credit. So I'm gonna go ahead and provision that really quickly. First off, we're gonna go ahead and go into Kubernetes. We're gonna create a cluster. We need the minimum specification cluster possible. I'll call this just simply WordPress-K8s. I'm gonna end up deleting it at the end of the series. You will probably wanna do the same. The region, 
pick a region that's close to you so latency or your speed of connecting with that cluster is lower. It probably won't make that big of a difference, but that's a good idea. Now for me, Fremont is probably the closest one here. I've got my Kubernetes version. I'm not gonna have my high availability control plane. I don't need that because, well, this is not gonna be a critical application. Maybe at some point you add something like that, uh, but it's not something we need right now. Next up, we're gonna be using the shared CPU. I'm just gonna be using a Linode 2 gig, $12 monthly. Now the default is three. We're gonna stick with the default because it's $36 a month, right? So you can really practice a lot with that $100 credit uh, over the next few months. And of course, if you have any issues or something like that and you're wanting to learn more, let us know. We'll probably try to help you out and get you more credit so you can learn, right? So I, I definitely wanna make that an, a huge emphasis uh, here is I wanna help you learn, I wanna help you get better. So we've got our cluster running. There are a few other tools you might wanna have on your local machine before we actually start using it. One of them is Visual Studio Code, right? So if you don't have VS Code, it's a great text editor. I really highly recommend it. Next, you might also wanna have Docker installed on your local machine. Now, that means Docker Desktop, but it also could mean Docker Engine. This is just how we can run our containers. If you haven't ever done this, there's a really good chance that this might not be the series for you. I also recommend having kubectl or kubectl, the com Kubernetes command line tool, on your local machine as well, so that we can do a number of things related to our cluster once we actually get there. So with this in mind, I'm gonna just let this finish provisioning. It should take a minute or two. Once it's done, we'll actually go ahead and configure our local kubectl to use this kubeconfig file in just a moment. And with our cluster configured, let's go ahead and configure our VS Code project. So opening up VS Code, I'm gonna go ahead and open a folder. I'm gonna navigate into my dev folder where I keep all these things and I'll call this WordPress-K8s. And then of course I'll go ahead and open that and we're gonna save this workspace as, and what do you know, WordPress-K8s. And there we go. Inside of this folder, I'll also create a .cube folder and I'll also do a .gitignore file because at some point you'll probably wanna add this to a Git repository. That's not something I'm gonna cover right now. But the idea being that we have this workspace here and I can actually add in some values that allow me to associate my workspace to the correct Kubernetes cluster. In other words, if I open up the terminal here and do kubectl git pods or git node or whatever, I'll get this connection refused part. We wanna change that. We want it to actually be for our cluster. So jumping back into the console, I wanna download the cube config file here. This of course is gonna download it to my downloads folder, which I will just go ahead and drag this file on over in here. And there's my cube config file in here. This of course gives me admin permission so I can do anything I need to in the cluster. This is a good thing while we're learning. It's probably not a good thing when you go into production, you wanna limit the amount of permissions you give to any given user, potentially even yourself. So that's something else you might wanna look into as far as service accounts. I have stuff that covers that. Let me know if you have questions there. And now still in that code workspace file, in the settings block, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a few items here. This allows for this folder to be cross-platform usable in the sense that we can declare a kubeconfig environment variable. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But the idea also is if you wanna change the editor you use in Kubernetes, you can also do that with this environment variable. In my case, I really like using Nano a lot. Uh, you could use Vim if you'd like, either way. Uh, that editor itself, you can change on each operating system or each platform you might wanna use. Now, these environment variables only happen with the terminal, the integrated terminal in VS Code. So control tilde will toggle this, but right now, there's no values in here. If I do echo dollar sign cube config, I got nothing. So what I actually have to do is open up a new terminal window, right? And now I can do echo dollar sign cube config and, and what do you know, there's the path to it. Now, of course, this is actually still not valid because I have WordPress dash K8 dash cube config, not just cube config. So I always change it to just cube config, just like that. This makes it easier for me to move it to another system, no problems, assuming that I give it that same name. I usually do not name it the same as the default for your system. 
The default for your system looks a little bit more like this. The reason I don't have it as the default is I don't want it to ever get confused, basically. So I leave it just like that. To me, this is the easiest way to manage those cube config files, especially in an environment that you might be working in all the time, which of course is your text editor here. From there, I can do kubectl and get pods. This of course will give me no pods, but it won't give me any errors. And of course I can do the nodes to see that those are the correct nodes and all of that. Now I didn't mention the version of Kubernetes before because you should just use the latest. Uh, that's the reason I didn't mention it because the version itself at this point doesn't matter that much as to what we're doing. This will work for future versions, I believe. Of course, if that changes, please let me know. But the idea here is we can now actually access our Kubernetes cluster right on our local machine, uh, which is also pretty useful to do. Uh, granted, there are a bunch of plugins that you can use in VS Code. A lot of those plugins we're not even going to look at in this series because we really just want to stay focused on the few manifests that we need to work with to make sure that our WordPress Kubernetes cluster is actually working correctly. 